So I've had a difficult couple of days this week and I felt like it was important to share and show myself on days where I'm too tired to shave, um, put on makeup, and you know, that it's all right. Not every day has to be perfect. I don't know if I'm jumping the gun on talking about this topic so early on in my making videos, but I think it's really important and there's not a whole lot of content on it. At least in the 10 years that I spent between recognizing that I was transgender and actually coming out, I had not found any real content on it. What Internalized transphobia essentially is, is the fear or misunderstanding of what transgender is or means uh, turned inward on oneself. Growing up as a kid and wanting and trying to express my femininity just to have it constantly shot down and disregarded, um, it made me feel not seen. It made me feel invalidated. I would try to express these feelings just to have them continuously bubble up. It got difficult, you know, there, there, there were innocent thoughts. Like, what would it be like to wear those clothes? What would it be like to have a dress twirl about me while, you know, I spun? What would it be like? What does the breast tissue feel like against the other when they're held in a bra? Like these, these were all just weird questions that I would ask myself and it made me scared. It made me scared of the constant jokes about trannies, the constant news stories of cross-dressing perverts, the media depictions of trans people being sickos or serial killers. It's scary as fuck when there's no media representation around who you are or, or what you're going through. I'd have a lot of fears of growing up to become one of those sickos that the media portrayed. I did my best to try and separate myself from these thoughts. I didn't want to be a sicko, yet I was going through this involuntarily. I just always felt like a woman and it made me scared. It made me anxious. It made me wonder, uh, is this an alter ego? Is this multiple personality disorder? Is this schizophrenia? And it wasn't like it was any easier to understand whether I was or not because I'd snap out of all these fears just to realize that I'm standing in front of the mirror with a knife at the base of my genitals, crying, wishing that I wasn't born into this life, thinking that this couldn't possibly be who I am. I had a lot of shame around these experiences. I felt ashamed that I wasn't being who I was. I felt shame for having these thoughts I wasn't told to. Shame for not appreciating what I was given. Those kinds of feelings pushed me and made me want to revert to give being a guy a try. And especially because there was no real distinction made as a kid between gender and sex. You know, it, it made me really fearful that I was going to be caught, that I was going to be exploited, that I was going to be what they were saying. It's not like there was a whole lot of role models back then. Um, you know, people weren't out and proud about being trans like they are today. There was one individual though, as I've mentioned before, in our community that they would wear um, like a plastic Halloween costume and a wig that didn't really fit. I didn't really understand and because of how the media portrays things, I wasn't trying. I came to better understand, though, through my own experience. I really did have to step away from all of these stories and whatnot that were made out to scare me. 
I ended up coming closer to transition and actually coming out because I had to do it for my own livelihood and sanity. Like I stated before, it was ruining relationships. The more that I saw myself become something I wasn't, the less worthwhile my life had seemed. So I kind of just came to a corner point where it was like, maybe I should really just be honestly me. Transition was easier tackled in steps. I started to buy underwear and, you know, I, I try and wear them under my clothes and that would secretly build up my confidence. And then maybe I'd try on a dress behind locked doors to see who I could have been. And then maybe I would try on a wig so that I can embrace those long luscious locks I wanted, yet hide my face. All of this happening over the spans of years. Of course, <laughs> I didn't get like the most flattering things. They weren't super, you know, I wasn't putting a lot of money into this at first because I was afraid to commit to myself. I was just going to buy this stuff just to try it on, just to throw it out, just to go out, buy more, try it on, throw it out. Just because I was born feeling like a woman doesn't mean that I was born understanding the ludicrousizing systems for women or have fashionable taste and know what would flatter my body. It was really easy in the beginning to look mix match out of place. I would scare myself when I looked in the mirror. I think it's really easy for other people to look from outward in and judge what these experiences are like when you don't know, when you don't get to hear our voice, when you just hear the news stories make us out to, to be monsters. How we treat trans people in our society directly relates to the fear and hatred I had of myself. I wasn't scared to be a woman. I was taught to be scared of being a woman. And once I learned to recognize and identify my fears and anxieties around internalized transphobia, it became very clear that I could see this in other minority groups. We really need to reassess how we view, stereotype, treat other people in our world because we just continue to create systems that oppress and perpetuate fear and hatred and my experience could have been much easier done without all of this. I really hope and look forward to things being easier for the children of tomorrow, that they're starting to transition younger and earlier and that it's being recognized. Well, thank you for tuning in once again. Until next time, please walk and move through this earth reality with nothing but love for others and most importantly yourself. Thanks.